so you're thinking about moving to Plymouth, Michigan. Well, in this video, we want to take you through the things that you must know before moving to Plymouth, Michigan. Hello, hello. So today's video, we're going to talk about Plymouth, Michigan. Before we get into that, my name is Matt Talbot. My team and I help people just like you every single day move here to Michigan, and we absolutely live for it. We get calls, texts, emails, all sorts of correspondence every single day of people that want to move here to Michigan, and it's really what we live for. So we're in Plymouth, Michigan today. We want to talk a little bit about Plymouth, Michigan, and dive a little bit deeper into that. If you're thinking about moving the area in the next three to six months, or even in the next 12 to 18 months, it is a great time to connect with us. We're happy to provide a little bit of value for you and understand a little bit more about your story. So Plymouth, Michigan, in this video, we want to talk about some of the restaurants, the parks, and some other must know things to do in downtown Plymouth before you move to the area. So you can understand if it's a good area for you or not. First and foremost, always number one on my list, pretty close to it at least, is going to be restaurants, food. It's always top of mind for me, and I think it's top of mind for most humans. You gotta know, are there good places to eat? Are there places to go check out? And I think in Plymouth, we want to talk about not only the benefits and some of the awesome restaurants that are there, but the vibe, a little bit about what to expect. We have some good B-roll, what they look like and stuff like that. So you can get a feel for the restaurant scene and what it's like to go out in Plymouth. So number one on our list for restaurants today would be Campari's on the Park. It is just such a staple. You got to talk about it because it's a few reasons. One is there's great food in there. Uh, two is it's such a great location. It sits next to Sardine Room as well too. Sardine Room and Campari's, two great restaurants right there and they're right on the park. And what we mean by that is for those of you who don't know, Plymouth is about halfway between Ann Arbor and Detroit. It's on the 275 corridor and it's a really cool old town vibe surrounded by the township. So right in the center of town there is Kellogg Park. It's sort of like the gathering spot. There's a lot of things happening which we'll jump into in a minute and we talk about that pretty heavily in some of our other videos as well too what's happening in Kellogg Park and what the benefits are of that particular area but anyway Campari's on the park and uh, Sardine Room are right there both have good food Campari's is more of an Italian type feel so your pastas and pizzas and that type of stuff and next door is Sardine Room which has a fantastic brunch very well known for their brunch really really good food in there I love hanging out on Sundays and that's an oyster bar so they have the raw bar they have the oysters they have all that stuff going on there in Campari's uh, I'm um, sorry, at Sardine Room and next door is Campari's. There's some other good restaurants in there as well too, which we'll get into in a minute, but I wanted to start there without a doubt. Next on our list, one of my personal favorites, we're gonna hop to the other side of downtown Plymouth and that's what we call Old Village here in town. So there's really two areas. One is right downtown surrounding uh, Kellogg Park as far as like the scene or whatever. The other side of town is going to be Old Village, which is a little bit more of a different feel, a little bit more artsy, a little bit more old school. There's been a lot of recent changes. There's some continued changes going on over there. Um, so that's a different part of town as well too. But one of my favorite restaurants on that part of town is going to be Herman's. Actually, Herman's Old Town Grill, is that what it's called? Herman's Old Town Grill, got it right. Okay, so we call it Herman's around here. It is a the definition of a dive bar feel um, and tons of fun. So uh, only open typically, I don't think they do brunch, but a lunch and dinner and um, great food in there. Probably the best bar food in Plymouth. Hopefully no one hates me for that, for saying that, but currently I think is, is uh, um, some of the best bar food in Plymouth without a doubt. And you know, it's a great vibe, big bar in there. So it's a fun place to go at night as well too. There's a game room with pool tables and you know, all your video games and all that type of good stuff, good music in there. And again, Friday, Saturday night, you're gonna get a little bit more of like a turn up feel but very much a dive bar like the video game area they have you know how like they have deer heads on the wall and stuff like that well they actually have like a giant dinosaur head on the wall which is pretty cool so anyway it just, it just it's sort of like a dive bar meets a throwback this is gonna be a very weird uh, connection throwback applebee's there's all sorts of stuff on the walls and everything but anyway good food in there good vibes great people and it's right in the center of old village plymouth so tons of stuff happening in there too um they do a vibe festival over there they do a chili cook-off throughout the year they have a they have a flannel and flapjacks event coming up so old village is its own unique part of town really interesting part of town and good uh, uh potential for a lot of people if you're thinking about moving to downtown plymouth there's you know some pros and cons 
Sometimes which we can almost do a whole video on that between Old Village and downtown, but Herman's is the spot. Next on our list, and I don't know if these are necessary all in this order, but I would say three on our list, definitely one of my favorites for a lot of different reasons is gonna be Nico and Valley in downtown Plymouth. It is fantastic Italian food. It's right downtown, um, right off Main Street. Well, just, just off the beaten path from Main Street there. But it's a really cute, small vibe, very intimate feeling uh, Italian restaurant. They do live music in there sometimes. I mean, really good old school Italian food, okay? The owner's fantastic. Paul and his family run the place, and it is really, really good Italian food. One of my favorite Italian places in all of Southeast Michigan, without a doubt. And the people are fantastic. The vibe is fantastic. It is really sort of like, not taking away from any of the other restaurants, but it's almost why you move to Plymouth or a city like Plymouth, is to be able to walk to a place like Nico and Valley, meet the owner, have the vibe, have the experience, have a good glass of wine, understand what the new things on the menu are. I mean, that's what it's all about right there. Nico and Valley, without a doubt, fantastic spot. Highly, highly recommend it. If you're visiting, if you're moving to the area, it's a must know, better check it out. Okay. Next on my list, I didn't want to forget a breakfast place. This is one of my favorite breakfast places around, and that's Crawford's Kitchen. So shoot back over to the other side of town uh, in Old Village there. We should throw up the map, guys, to kind of show the difference there. We got lots of videos on this, so definitely uh, check out our Plymouth Canton uh, section of our uh, Living in Detroit page because we have a lot of different videos on all the suburbs, but specifically Plymouth Canton without a doubt. So shooting back over to Old Village is Crawford's Kitchen. It is a very unique A-frame type building, I would say. Like, it's got this really long roof that goes all the way down almost to the ground and indoor seating during the summer and the beautiful times of year outdoor seating as well too right in old village there again small place intimate vibes really good food only for breakfast and lunch um, but they have great eggs in there good sandwiches all that good stuff Crawford's Kitchen I cannot forget my favorite breakfast place in town without a doubt it's definitely worth checking out uh, wanted to note Nick reminded me about the uptown sandwich I understand that's very good I go with the veggie hash. I don't know if that's the exact name, but it's like veggie, potatoes, eggs, sourdough, cup of coffee. I'm actually getting hungry right now because I went to the gym and I haven't ate yet. So I'm down with Crawford's Kitchen without a doubt. Okay. Next on our list, so Mexicana food, without a doubt, we gotta, gotta jump over to the Tex-Mex. It's actually known as a tequila bar. Um, that's going to be Barrio, love Barrio, great spot right in downtown Plymouth, walking distance to all the different shops and all the happenings in downtown Plymouth, without a doubt. They do have some outdoor seating, but it's a really big place. They did a recent expansion, super long bar, tons of TVs in there. So it's almost like Mexican meets tequila meets sports bar, right? So a good place to watch a game. Um, they got like 30 foot ceilings in there it's a really big feeling place but they have great mexican food without a doubt i'm a fan of the fajitas in there the tacos are good i always do the bowl at lunch it's like chicken and rice and all this different stuff so barrio high on the list and they have a variety of different margaritas if that's your flavor and of course tequilas and also a long list of beers and bourbon as well um, so barrio is definitely always high on my list when i'm thinking plymouth food and i think all the locals think the same um, they have pitcher margaritas which can be a good celebration you might need an uber for that one but again very good vibes fun vibes music it's loud in there it's fun it's happening it's a good energy in barrio without a doubt again another reason why you would choose a city like plymouth is to be able to walk to a place like that ask for the barrio burrito the old way what's the old way oh smothered in queso i also like the, i like the trio you remind me of the trio they have uh guac queso salsa super super delicious and the avocado tacos are good for you veggies out there if you like vegetarian food and you don't want to jump into the meat anyway barrio is a good spot highly recommend it last but not least on our list is the local town's irish pub and so i love that we have all these different uh things in plymouth here but um what i mean by that is uh we have a lot of different options a lot of different variety there's also indian food and thai food and a bunch of other good restaurants too so the list is fairly long here i'm missing some but i had to focus on a couple focal points must haves and sean o'callahan's is a must have it's an irish pub uh during the world cup in soccer it's always slapping in there but again sports bar kind of feel irish pub feel uh, tons of draft beers and stuff like that and the food is very very good fantastic irish food if you want a corned beef sandwich or if you're looking for a good burger or if you're looking for fish and chips okay um bangers and mash i don't know they have all sorts of stuff like that in there it's great um really good spot and i'll jump in stay tuned for the rest of the video because we want to talk about some of the bar scene as well too that would kind of tie in with it with that as well as some of the other restaurants we talked about but that's off peniman street which is another interesting location to pay attention to in a happening part of town to try to be 
close to if you want to be walking distance. So again, a lot of the reasons why people move to a city like Plymouth, if you're even thinking about moving to Plymouth, one of the biggest reasons is you want to be able to walk to bars and restaurants and shopping and all that stuff. And so, however, all these are right in the center of town. And as far as as far as Southeast Michigan goes, there's only, I mean, there's a handful of cities that are like this. This is one of the best, especially locationally. If you want to be you know, close to Ann Arbor and Detroit, it's such a central location. Northville is similar to that. And there's a lot of different downtown cities, more like Woodward Corridor as well, too, that are fantastic locations, but that's going to be a different part of town. We have lots of video on the Woodward Corridor as well, as well. Ferndale, Royal Oak, Birmingham, all those areas. We spent a ton of time over there as well, too. And there's a ton of value in those parts of town as well. But sticking on Plymouth in this video, up next is going to be our local parks in Plymouth parks in Plymouth. So for the most part, this video is about downtown Plymouth and we want to start with a park I already mentioned. That's Kellogg Park. It's right downtown where all the different things congregate in town. There is art in the park. There's the ice festival in the winter. There's the fall festival. There's a lot of different things happening in Kellogg Park right downtown. Similar to what you might find, you know, off Woodward and Nine Mile area in Ferndale where they do a lot of the different events and stuff like that. That's how this is in, in Plymouth. And so Kellogg Park is definitely the center of town. It's where you want to be if you want to be close to walking distance and stuff in a close pr proximity to downtown. And then again, hop to the other side of town and you have Old Village as well too. There's a lot of happenings as, as well there. But um, Kellogg Park, big fountain in the middle. We've got tons of videos, tons of footage on that. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things happening. There's yoga, there's music in the park every Friday in the summer, all that type of good stuff. So that's number one on our list. Number two on our list as far as parks in Plymouth, Michigan would be Heinz Park and specifically um, Heinz Drive, I should say. I don't know if specifically is the right way to say it. But, so Heinz Park is off of Heinz Drive, which is a very, very interesting place in Southeast Michigan. I've talked about this in a lot of different videos for some of the different areas that throughout Southeast Michigan, but really it runs from about Northville all the way down river, like through Dearborn and continuing on. And it's this long strip of road that they decided not to develop through the years. So there's park after park. There are jogging trails, biking trails. There's a lot of Frisbee golf going on in these areas as well too. So Heinz Drive goes right through Plymouth and Heinz Park is right there as well as some other parks as well too. And you can go rent a pavilion to do your picnic type vibe. There's Wilcox Lake over that way. You can go kind of enjoy the lake and check that out. Um, there's actually like an RV race thing. I don't know much about it because I'm not into that, but I would be into it. It looks cool. Um, it's like a big dirt RV jump. So they race these like race cars, which is pretty cool. So there's a lot of that type of stuff happening down Hines. Uh, if you live close there, or even if you want to commute there, what's great is it's really good for biking. A lot of people are into biking. There's a lot of local like runs and stuff like that. Marathons, all that stuff will be through there as well too. And like park after park after park for miles down Hines Drive. So Hines Park is huge on our list. If that's, if that's something you're into, you get the best of both worlds in a city like Plymouth or Northville, or even if you go down to like Dearborn area, depending, there's a lot of different stuff happening on that Heinz Drive area. So a lot of people say, hey, we're moving back to town. I want to live in Southeast Michigan, but I really like riding the bike far. I want to tr try to maybe let people know about some of the different areas and subdivisions that are close to that Heinz Drive and Heinz Park because it's fantastic for those type of people. You know, you're in the middle of the subdivision, you're close to downtowns, you're 30 minutes to Detroit, all that good stuff. But also you can be in nature and like, like that if you're close to one of these areas. So it's definitely something of note. So as far as downtown Plymouth goes, there's a lot of other smaller parks for the kids and stuff. So if you have little kids um, and you're living in downtown Plymouth, I mean, they're scattered throughout. I don't know how many exactly. I can think of at least like eight to 12 in my head. There's probably more than that of little parks. Like there's one off Evergreen. There's one uh, not far from Main Street. There's another one by Heck. I mean, there's there's a lot of different little parks in downtown Plymouth, not counting the Heinz Drive stuff I was just talking about. And so it's a good area for that and a lot of different reasons. But last on our list is not downtown. Everything else we're talking about in this video, I think is all downtown. But I wanted to mention Mayberry State Park, which is technically Northville. Um, it doesn't, Northville Novi area. It doesn't necessarily touch Plymouth, but you're only like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max from downtown Plymouth to Mayberry State Park. Huge state park, uh, walking trails, jogging trails. I mean, the whole nine yards over there, you can camp, everything like that. Uh, in Mayberry State Park. You can continue on to other places like Kensington. I mean, um, Metro Detroit, Southeast Michigan, depending on the area, if you're focused on a specific area, area, actually we started work with a client last night, they're looking in the Sterling Heights, Rochester area. That's great. We know a very heavily amount about that area as well too. And there's a lot of different similar parks um, throughout all of Southeast Michigan to like a Mayberry or Kensington that are all, all scattered throughout.
health. So if you're into outdoor activities that's important for you or your family or one of your loved ones, and you're thinking about moving to the area, we can give you some different tips of locations that might make the most sense for you for that particular reason. Okay, last on our list today, we have a list of things to do in Plymouth. Before I do so, can you please do me a favor? I just like, if there's one favor, I hate to be this guy, but I'm begging and pleading, hit subscribe, tap for notifications. It tells YouTube we're doing a good job. If I told you the amount of work that goes into these videos, um, am I perfect? No. Do we really try to make these as, as beneficial as possible? Yes, and there's a whole team on the back end working to do so. So we really appreciate that like and follow. It means the world to us again. And we have had the opportunity to help so many families move here to town. And I feel like we don't talk a lot about real estate on this channel because I want to coach you on the area and stuff like that. But from a real estate perspective, you are in really, really good hands. So when YouTube is told that we're doing a good job, I believe I have the best responsibility to get that out there because I know my team and I will truly help you look out for your best needs and help you out along the way. My team is the Telba team. Check out our reviews on Google. We have over 100 five-star reviews. You cannot find anything with a five-star review on our team. We sold over 500 homes the last couple years. That's my shameless plug, but please, there's a lot that goes into this video. So if you like this video, fantastic. Moving on. Things to do in Plymouth. Okay, so there's a lot of things happening. I've kind of tied in here and I don't want to miss my list here so things to do in Plymouth one on my list is kind of different from some of the other stuff we've talked about and that's gonna be the Plymouth Historical Museum so there's a great museums right downtown talks about Plymouth and the history um, it is a official nonprofit in town and it's a cool part of town for a lot of different reasons it's right by City Hall it's right by the library across the street from PARC shout out to Don if you ever see this video um, PARC which is a whole it used to be the high school then it was a middle school and then they turn into a whole nonprofit um, groups or there's a lot of different organizations out of there anyway right there the reason why I wanted to talk about the historical museum is there's a lot of good things happening and whether you just come to visit which is awesome um, if you live in a different area or maybe you live in the township and you want to come check that out fantastic and if you go to any of the schools here in Plymouth Ken these are great opportunities um, to be able to use these types of resources um, for a lot of different reasons. So the Historical Museum is awesome, surrounded by a bunch of other awesome stuff as far as things to do right there in downtown Plymouth. Up next on our list of things to do in downtown Plymouth is going to be shopping. There's really a plethora of different options, so I apologize if I leave your place of business out on this video. However, just a, a couple of note, like one that comes to mind, I've just been there for so long. It's a women's clothing store called Maggie and Me. It's such a cool place. My mom always loved their clothes through the years um, and it's a very unique type of place and I love that to me that's sort of like Plymouth in a nutshell in a lot of different ways of uh, these small boutique stores and they're everywhere I have a fantastic newly formed relationship with 28 furniture that's an awesome place right off Main Street they make custom tables um, they have a lot of different candles and you know stuff for your home and everything so really cool place as far as that goes that's one that comes top of mind without a doubt jumping to the other side of town in the old village is fine keepers so if you're into more of that vintage stuff if you're looking for a cool find um, that's a really cool place as well too and there's really limitless different options of shopping depending on what you're looking for in town so again you have that small town feel in Plymouth where you can support local without a doubt um, Westbourne Market it's shopping and it there is a couple of them it is a chain but there's only a handful here in Michigan and it's a great place to go they have hot lunches in there they have really good high-end deli meats and and food counter and all that type of stuff a lot of different different organic. I mean, it's a cool little market. It's not a giant grocery store, but it's a cool place to support local. And in Plymouth, you're still five minutes to some of the bigger chains as well, too. There is a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of different places to shop in downtown Plymouth, but you still get some of the bigger chains as well, too, if that's important to you as far as Meyer, uh, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, all that stuff is scattered throughout the general area. Um, but definitely a thing to do in downtown Plymouth would be hit the boutique shops, support local. There's a million different places to check out. I mean, there's cool um, optometry places for your glasses. I mean, there's a lot of that different stuff. There's there's a million little uh, doctor's offices and different places like that as well too. So you can get that feel if you don't want to you know, drive far and you want it all in the center of town there. Plymouth might be the city for you. Last on our list of things to do, might not be for everyone, but for those of people that are looking for that, is there is a decent bar scene in downtown Plymouth and throughout the area. And when I say decent bar scene, I think it's important because Plymouth has done a very interesting job 
have from a government perspective of sort of like making it not this like crazy party town which it almost could go to if they let it um, but they don't they control it and stuff like that so it's really more about that family feel and then there is still some places to hit at night so I already mentioned Sean O'Callaghan's on that uh, same strip there is Penniman you have um, the Post which is a great great place for is a sports bar it's really you know indoor outdoor seating a great place to go get a beer the pen next door um, there's a lot of other places in town as well too that are good drink spots um, one dimensions arbor brewing company so um, that's a local brewery they have pizza and food in there um, and next to a um, another italian pizza place as well too right in the center of town so you have this you know casual upscale bar scene let's call it it's not like crazy uh, college town 23 year olds running around everywhere which you can have in other cities so if that's what you're looking for let us know we'll point those cities out to you um, but it is a good bar scene lots of fun things to do in downtown Plymouth if that's what you're into going out for a drink and having some fun with your friends uh, easy uber services in the summer they even have those what are they called the bikes with the things behind you they're called the uh it's like a weird word. Anyway, they have those down there and stuff like that too. So if you live in downtown Plymouth, easy to get around, very walkable. Um, and if you like the idea of going to grab a drink with friends or family, then it is a good place for that for a lot of different reasons. So that does it for some must know, some things to consider, some places to visit. If you're thinking about moving to Plymouth, Michigan, we want to give you a rundown, have a, give you a better understanding of what that looks like, what the feel is, an insider's knowledge from someone local to the area here of what you get in Plymouth, Michigan.